everybody, and welcome to Digium Live. I'm your host, Brian Ferguson, and with us today is Danny Windham, the CEO of Digium. Hello. And we are here for what is becoming a yearly tradition now with you and I doing the business trends for the current, talking about the past year and the current year coming up. So welcome. Thanks. All right, so Danny, why don't you tell us a little bit about how the predictions you made or the trends you were talking about last year panned out? Well, it's always interesting to look back and see if what we predicted last year actually came true yeah. or not. And I would say, in general, um, most of what we predicted was spot on. Might have been a little aggressive on a topic or two. But, you know, this industry changes quickly, but it doesn't change so quickly that the high-level trends are completely different one year to the next. Mm -hmm. And so the trends that we saw last year, many of them are still extending into this year and may possibly extend into next year as well. Okay. So things like mobility in the cloud, those kind of things were still still growing or yeah. still, still happening? Right? Last year we predicted that there would be an increase in spending. I think we've seen a little bit of that, that the adoption of cloud would grow. Mobility, BYOD would be big trends, and I think all of those things have happened um, very aggressively this year. Uh, we also predicted that organizations would be become active in uh, communications enabling their business processes, and I think we were a little aggressive on that topic. All right, so let's go ahead and move forward to 2016, and one of the big ones that you've talked about is that the role of IT as an organization is really progressing. So what do you mean by that? Well, let's look at that in two ways. One, um, let's think about existing companies. The trends we just discussed, um, people using mobile devices in the business infrastructure, bringing their own device, concept of moving services into the cloud, all of those things put a lot of pressure on the IT department. So the IT department is having to morph. Um, the IT department in general is moving from building and operating the business infrastructure to selecting and managing partners who are then the business partners for providing that communication infrastructure. Right. So, you know, if we look at what's happened inside of existing organizations, there's certainly been a lot of change inside of existing organizations. But I think the biggest spot to look for this change is in new young companies. You know, I think right. our country has moved into the day of the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to start a company. Right. Uh, if you look at the valuations of some of the unicorns that are out there, you might understand why right. everyone wants to, be the next to start Facebook, a, right, right? Exactly, start a new company. Um, but in that trend, today it costs so much less to start a company and those companies are not investing in traditional business infrastructure. They're outsourcing it. They're taking it to right. the cloud. So the real dichotomy uh, lives between young companies that really haven't put a business infrastructure in place versus the traditional ones that are having to morph the way they do business. Right. All right, so one of the other one, which I think is kind of lends to what you talked about that IT is trying to really having to take over, it, like BYOD in the cloud, is evolving work styles. I know um, just <clears throat> My work life has changed, being able to work from home, being able to work remotely. It's just a lot different than it was in the past. Can you talk about that and kind of moving forward? I think um, communications is an enabler of a bigger social trend, which is live where you want and work from there. You right. know, uh, historically, we've looked at work as a place, and then most people relocated to be close to that place. Well, that's not the case today. If you look at uh, combining trends, just uh, social desires of where people want to live to begin with, uh, communications infrastructure enabling people to be just as productive remotely as in a building, along with a lower unemployment rate where people are fighting over workers today. All of those trends are combining to create an environment where people are working from wherever it is they want to live. And yeah. that gives rise to the need to all sorts of collaboration capabilities in a business infrastructure to ensure that those employees can be as productive as the ones that are inside the traditional uh, corporate building. All right. All right, very good. So the next one you talked about, which is interesting, which is enabling business processes. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, if you look at um, the way business has traditionally been done, the IT department has been responsible for developing, building, and operating the infrastructure of most companies. And so companies have some set of processes by which they operate. The IT department has traditionally been very integral in setting those up. But now let's think about an environment where the IT department doesn't really build the infrastructure. They select the business partners who bring components of the infrastructure in. Right. And now IT's role is to put all those things together. Mm -hmm. The way that's being done today is primarily through the use of APIs. So instead of writing large blocks of code to run your company, you're interconnecting and integrating software as a service elements from different suppliers so that you can enable your business processes. Mm -hmm. In those cases, communications enabling those business processes is a, a trend that's allowing companies to be more uh, productive by incorporating um, communication capabilities into the business process where employees don't have to context switch to pick up a different application to communicate with a customer. It gets built into the business process. Right. 
All right, good. So the last one we have is really interesting, and that's the productive utilization of data. So data is all, there's so much of it. There's people being hired specifically just to manage data today. So well, um, where, where were you going with productive utilization of data? You know, Google has taught us that uh, big data has big application. And so lots of companies today are trying to understand what value there is in big data. Well, big data might be, might be good, but what you really want is big information. Right. right? You want to take that data and turn it into information. One of the trends in the world of software as a service is a new concept most organizations in this uh, field are incorporating, which is the concept of customer success. Customer success is about ensuring that customers are interacting with your product, engaging with your product, and that they're happy. Because in the world of SaaS, the barrier to change is low. Customers get unhappy with your, your service. Uh, they may go to They're your gone, competitor. Right. right. Yep. So using data to, to gain insights into are customers using your product? Are they happy with your product? Looking at your communications infrastructure, a lot of the information about how your customers are communicating and interacting with the organization comes through your communications infrastructure. Lots of data available there, particularly if you've chosen the right products along the way to provide you information, uh, access to that, to that data. Mm -hmm. So paying attention to that data, using it to understand your customer behavior, and then using it to improve your customer experience is the spot where I see a lot of uh, emphasis and activity in the next year. Great. All right, well, we're very excited about 2016 here and what's, uh, what's to come with Digium, so we look forward to seeing a lot of that coming soon. And uh, I definitely appreciate your time again on Digium Live. All right, thanks, Brian. All right, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Digium Live.